Good evening to everyone. Hello, dear friends. This is the second day of Dolls and Teddy's festival. Uh, here we are, Guzel Kastina and Sergei Kastina. Good evening. Let's speak about today's, yesterday's speaker. We had an interesting day. Natalia Lebedeva made a wonderful speech about textile dolls. I like to mention that her tutorial had a, got a great success. Many people ordered it, paid for, and downloaded it. What do you need to know to create a signature teddy bear? Let me tell you a, a little about myself. I'm Guzel Kastina. I create teddy bears, make online tutorials about how to create a teddy bear, sell my crafts and patterns. In 2013, my book How to Create a Teddy Bear in Step-by-Step -step Photos was issued. Here you can see my children. Twelve years ago they looked like this. We used to live in one room flat in Novosibirsk. I bought different materials, cards and books about crafts to develop my children. And this is how I involved myself. Of course, first I didn't make teddy bears. They were different types of handicraft. I tried to study and to make those from polymer clay by Fimo by a book. See what I had that time. Now these toys seem to me so funny uh, compared to other fabulous dolls from our festival. I think everyone used to make textile do toys, toys from attic. Me too. I used to sew these hearts. Here you can see a picture of my toys, uh, bunnies from attic. The first teddy bear I made was sewn from a texture yarn. I had no idea about rules. I made toys the way I thought it would have been right. Or, oh, to be precise, we support to be right because my family supported me. I knew nothing about professional materials. These are my first naive, maybe strange creatures I used to make. This is how my first knitted toys used to look like. They were funny, sweet, but absolutely not professional, not vintage, you know, uh, but it was a great pleasure to knit them. These works drew attention, people bought them, so I think it gave me, in fact, forces of some sort. Uh, there, these are also my first box, touchy, sweet, home-like. It used to be impossible in Russia to buy craft materials 12 years ago, and we had to make a lot of work by ourselves. My family supported me, my husband and my son made discs for me. My first work set aside during exhibitions. You can see a picture of the first Teddy Mania in Moscow. Uh, see my bear set separately on a sofa. I'm not ashamed of this fact at all. They weren't placed with signature toys and children's crafts. They just sat on a sofa and I understood that I've done something wrong, I, so I should study. I came to Moscow to study to improve my skills. My first teacher was Nastya Kupcova. We made that with Coast Bear. That bear has discs, splints, it had glassed eyes and embroidered nose. I told you I would take a course for one day only. I flew to Moscow from, and from morning till evening we were making that teddy bear at DK Jemakach studio. Nastya asked me to make and bring all prepared patterns so we could occupy by only technical details. Assembling, pasting, embroidering. I am really grateful to Nastya. She was my mentor in Teddy's world. I came back home after that course and I met that bear. It is uh, made from more hair stuff with sawdust. That was my first craft I made correctly. My next craft were made on the basis of knowledge I got. In 2005, for the first time, I came to exhibition in Germany. In 2009, my bear, the bride, were nomin was nominated in the category dressed bear. It was made from Japan silk. This is Italian with coast bear. My skills were growing up, I learned about new materials, I worked with them, used them in my crafts. Now I make not only bears. I like vintage toys, this elephant from plush, for example. My favorite style is a vintage style, aged. These are plush elephants. Some of Soviet plush allows you to create crafts in retro style. You can transmit an image through that kind of material. Plush transmits an epoch. These elephants were made from vintage plush. Pink color of one of them seemed natural, but the elephant on the red picture is brighter. 
It is my pleasure to walk with plush. These elephants are made from viscose. That material helps me to create bright and cute images. To attract attention to teddy bears, uh, I organized exhibitions, lectures, meetings. Here is a photo of a teddy bear in a bookstore. The first exhibition I made was in Novosibirsk in 2006. I show my students crafts. I led meetings in bookstores, lectures. Uh, I gave workshops in my city about how to make a teddy. Women of different age saw teddies. Women old enough to be my mother and the new mothers with kids. Such a great company of ladies. All are involved, occupied, all are interested. Teddy bear is a type of handicraft which has no age boundaries. It's like we all become children again. Here you can see some bears my students made. All were sewn by the same pattern. But they're completely different. Even if you use a pattern by a famous author, you get a different image. I think many of these bears were made for kids. Mothers with children often come to workshops with uh, children. It is difficult for a child to do a work entirely by himself. Mothers and child sew together, otherwise a kid cannot manage to make a bear during the whole long workshop. Let's speak about teddy bear types. Mini bears still 4 inches and a half. I cannot say it's a rule of some sort, you can hear it nowhere. Vintage bears. We spoke about elephants, now I'll show you a picture of a vintage bear. More hair was aged artificially. You can in fact believe that a bear was forgotten in the attic or under rain. So whether to sew teddy bears on sewing machine or not, my opinion is that a hundred percent had made is appreciated, but it's not a rule or something. If you like to make all stitches in hands, welcome. If you use sewing machine, it's not bad at all. Dressed bear is a special category of bears. You can create any image you want, any dress, pants, pajamas. You can realize all your ideas from simple image to difficult ones. A composition is very much appreciated at exhibitions. I mean, when an author makes teddy bears stand or sit in a kind of a scene. Here on the picture you can see a teddy bear husband choosing a dress for his dearest wife. Very touchy. Teddy bear composition could be like this. Here is a teddy bear mom with her little baby. You can use different vintage and teak accessories in teddy bear composition. This is a cute image of autumn bears who are in a park with their baby, a family portrait. Another category of bears, a famous one, fantasy bears. When you see a bear looking like a fox or a wolf, yeah, it's a fantasy bear. They could have an interesting shape of a head with big unproportional paws, big noses. All these bears belong to this category. Sometimes it is called anime bears. Uh, for example, this is a type of a fantasy bear. A fat one on short legs with big nose and a head. Also, you can see not only bears, but different teddy bears' friends. It could be elephants, as you can see on the picture, viscose elephants. Classic bears look like this. You have no doubts that it is indeed a bear you can see. A head is in a triangle shape, uh, ears are high, eyes, nose, everything is proportional. These kind of bears we call classic bears. Let's speak about mistakes. Usually beginners make them. These mistakes can ruin a bear. That is why a bear looks unprofessionally. The main mistake is incorrect fixation of paws. To set up a pose, we make a puncture bar and owl. This place of pose fixation is really important. You see, a paw is attached too high. Pay attention on the, at the photo. It makes an impression that a bear has no neck. 
pose is fastened too close to a head. It looks unproportionally. We can correct it at fasten a pole below. In this case, see on a picture, an image of a bear is changed completely. So this is a main mistake when we fasten poles too high. You can see immediately a pole which is fastened harmonically. At this stage you can correct it. Look here, this is my teddy bear, one of the first tries in vintage style. Uh, here we can see two mistakes. Mistake number one, uh, poles fastened too high. And the second one, uh, upper poles are stuffed in shoulders too much. It seems that they're separate from the body. A bear looks like a boxer. Uh, if it is not something that you'd like to create, correct it. Otherwise, the image will look unprofessionally. The same mistake is here. Upper poles are uh, fastened too high and uh, it seems that a bear has no neck. Uh, I've shown you this bear before. Here is a, b a bow on, uh, on the neck of the bear. I think that was my trick. <laughs> Under the bow you would see poles fixed unprofessionally high and in fact they are too big. Let's speak about a lower pose fixation because it's actual indeed. See on the picture there is another mistake in the lower poles fasting. They are too high. I tried to pay your attention to it by a pen. In this case, a bear is strange and it doesn't sit on his paws, it sits on the bottom. Uh, see, as the zone is marked purple, his legs uh, will uh, be a little short and it will not sit straight. So, we change its position and we fix it lower. See another mistake in this case? We have got an impression that a bear sits on his legs. Paws are fastened too low. A purple terror is on the photo. We changed legs position in the third time. A bear sits on the bottom and on two legs, on three points. This is the best way of fixation. It will sit beautifully. His paws will not spoil. They will be straight. Look at this bunny. Another mistake. Here you can see his legs are fixed too low and the bunny sits on the legs. A bottom is too high and poles move on and sprawl. Uh, and of course I corrected it in the end. To avoid it, remember this rule. Your toy should sit on three points. How to correct it? Don't be lazy. You need to assemble a walk once again. You, should be, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. It is better to correct it when it's possible. And this bear made correctly. A bear has a neck. Uh, paws uh, aren't stuffed too much in shoulders. And they don't look like paws of boxer. On this slide, you can see uh, this bear from the back side. Uh, see, upper paws are fastened correctly. And you can see a neck. I used a, a short head mohair. This is a vintage bear. It is stuffed with sawdust and granules. Next slide, look please. Here you can see upper and lower paws are fastened correctly, proportionally. This is a viscose bunny and it sits on three points. The second very important question which is frequently asked is how to choose discs for Teddy if a pattern is from the internet? I'll tell you. We all use someone's patterns or do them by ourselves. So, if you take a pattern in the internet and discs are marked, wonderful. But if you have a pattern without them, how to choose discs? Look please, the first thing you should remember is whether an allowance for SIM is included into your pattern. Usually it also indicates it in all patterns or in description. We need to leave 5 mm from each edge to make a seam. It will be its place. If you uh, have a miniature, leave 2 or 3 mm. I draw a line on the picture and this is a place for a seam. Measure the distance between pores on a pattern. In our case it's 1 inch and a half. 
If you pay attention in the internet shops, factory discs have difference and step of 5 mm. I mean, there are discs of 1 cm and 1 cm and 5 mm, 2, 2 and 5 and so on. Take a disc, diameter 1 inch and a half. It seems logic to use this one, but it's not true. Consider that a disc has its own thickness. It should be about 2 mm, so a disc uh, of uh, 1 inch and a half will be too big, too tough. It's not perfect to us. Consider another variant. We take a disc of 1 inch diameter and we can see that it's too small. Uh, here is a gap between a disc and a seam. It's not suitable to us. I strongly recommend you to reduce this distance. In our case, a disc of 1 inch is too small for that pole. The ideal diameter is 1 inch and 3. It suits perfectly for us. That's why when you buy a pattern and choose discs, pay attention to it, it's important. All these twists and turns you will learn during the course of teddy bear creation. Are you ready to create your first teddy bear? Would you like to do it? I offer you my online tutorial Saw a First Teddy Bear in two variants, English and Russian. For someone who had never done teddy bears before and want to do a first craft, it suits perfectly. We'll learn how to make the exact teddy bear from the photo step by step. The first thing we'll learn is what do you need to create a teddy bear. Uh, bears are made with their head and paws moving with all fasting, that is important. You will learn how to put all patterns on material, how to work with the fur. Consider a length of the hair. On the picture you can see an image of a teddy bear we create during that online tutorial. We will learn to cut out all details correctly in a way not to ruin the fur. We will learn how to walk out a more hair and not to cut fur, but a base, not creating both spaces. We will learn to make seams in hands, I'll tell you about types of seams. You will see in what cases I use sewing machine. I have the simplest sewing machine brothers. I stitch some details on it. We will learn uh, to choose discs, splints for teddy bears with the pack we already discussed today. You will learn how to stuff pores and body and not to create empties. We'll make the first teddy bear with polyester fiber. It's for you to understand how to stuff pores. We will learn to fix pores and the head to the body using special fixing mechanisms. You will follow all steps you'll see on the screen. Everything I'll do you will make. A lot of teddy bear were made on that course. I'll show you them. Even beginners who have never saw before managed to do it and were satisfied by the result. As a bonus of the course purchase, I'll send you a book where I'll tell you all about best stores for teddy bear making. Because the question about purchasing on shops is actual for everyone. And I will show you my experience in that area. You can click the banner to left from the video if you are ready to study with me and if you want to sew your first teddy bear. You will get a link to this course to download it on your computer after the payment. I want to show you works by my students after the tutorial. A bear by Yelena Malachova, a bear by Oksana Yurchenko, a bear by Irina Selnikova, and this is a bear by Olga Ilyinich. To order the course, click a banner from the left side of the video. After uh, we'll get a payment automatically. We received a letter that you make a payment and you will get a link to download it with a password. You download the course, input the password and everything will be functioning properly. The price for the tutorial is 26 euros or 29 US dollars. This is a minimum for you to start sewing bears professionally. Of course you need to buy materials for that course to make a bear. 
all tricks and techniques are in this base tutorial. So press the button. You get a course and there will be a pattern in a separate file, a pattern on two separate sheets and instruction as well how to open, how to print and everything. I am under my name everywhere in all social networks so you can ask your questions and I answer you. If you have troubles to download the course and some other questions you can see an email Ask your questions onto this email and our technical support works quickly and we will help you quickly in all questions. We are going to say goodbye now. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Come to see us tomorrow. Bye-bye.